very young. You, don't, you can't even do that at this point anymore. Um, they have a, a, an age limit at this point. But then um, I started when I was 13, played French Open Wimbledon, just started the whole tour and uh, never looked back. I won, I won my first Grand Slam tournament in 1987, so um, I just turned 18 in uh, Paris, and uh, was yeah, it was um, a big milestone for me. And I'll follow that. <laughs> We're spending all four the next year, <laughs> and and uh, going to Seoul and winning the gold medal. Yeah, truly incredible year that um, you know, I always say that my youth helped me um, make it achievable. You know, I didn't quite realize the importance of what was happening at, at times and probably got a little less nervous than I would have a few years later. What, interesting enough, even though um, there's about five, six tournaments a year that the men and women play together, it's usually only the Grand Slams and and uh, um, down in, in Florida, Key Biscayne, and once in a while there, there used to be an, one more tournament where Indian Wells, where everybody played together, but our roads never really crossed, so we actually did not know each other well or had many conversations, and uh, not till uh, in 99 when uh, we uh, practiced uh, at one of the tournaments together and started little conversations. It went really quick. So, but not till then we actually, you, you know, got, got a chance to, to know each other well. Do they, do they feel it's pressure on us, <laughs> right? Not to mess things up. Sure. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging. I think it's, it's uh, interestingly enough, um, when uh, Andre, I've retired now over 12 years ago, and uh, Andre retired about six, seven years ago. So, um, yes, about six, six years ago. So basically, um, our kids were small enough to not really understand kind of what our career choices were before. And so they knew a little bit about tennis, but not till kindergarten came around. And uh, we as parents had to talk about what we've done in our career and what we're doing right now. They kind of more or less knew us for our foundation and charity work that we've been doing over, over the years. They knew that is school, that, you know, and, and different things that we worked on on my foundation. So they didn't understand really the uh, tennis part till we came to school and rang some trophies and showed a couple clips of you know what we used to do and suddenly they're like huh okay you know we want to know more about it and they understand it now but I think put it in the right spot very little now they've chosen different different activities our oldest uh, Jaden plays baseball loves it and uh, our little girl she she plays a little bit of tennis loves horseback riding hip-hop piano you know all kinds of different things. Well, Andre is born and raised in Las Vegas, so um, we have a big, uh, big family and um, for me coming from Germany it, it definitely was a change but it's, it's been great. My, my mom moved as well to Las Vegas very early on as well as my brother and his four kids so we've got so much family and friends and Honestly, it, it doesn't really matter where you are, if you have the right people around you, you know, that's how we feel. So we feel very lucky, but uh, I still go back to Germany quite a, quite a bit. Ooh, I'm not a relaxer. <laughs> Everybody laughs about that one. Um, yeah, I, you know, I relax when I'm active, when I'm uh, enjoying being with the kids or husband or doing different projects. I. I'm definitely a doer and goer, so so that's that's when I thrive. Oh, that goes long, long back. But uh, my first watch I ever had, um, I won it at a junior tennis tournament. I think it was maybe seven, eight years old, and it was a Mickey Mouse watch. Disney was a big sponsor of uh, all of the junior tournaments in Germany, and uh, so that was my first purchase. And I gotta say. I don't think I've ever played without watches ever again after that. I've always, through my career, 
felt like I needed a watch at any to at any point of the day. So always played with it as well. And do you still have the, the Mickey Mouse watch? I don't, unfortunately. No, I was one with the moving arm on the Mickey, but no, I don't have that anymore. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> you know, no, you know, then there came the swatch time. And uh, I actually got into collecting um, swatch watches, which I actually still have quite a few that we just passed on to our kids. And they got very excited, even though at this point they're probably, uh, some of them are collector items. But um, so, I've, yeah, I've always been, I've been, always had a little passion for watches, but even more importantly, appreciated time more throughout my life. You know what, it's a, it's a fast world right now. It's been one that, uh, yeah, you, I mean, as, as a parent, you watch closely, and so you try to be cautious. But um, in, in terms of, like I said earlier, we've passed, I've passed on some of my Swatch watches, and they've, they've uh, gotten um, some of that, so they've, they've enjoyed watches already. Yeah, it's been it's been three four years now. Um, they actually partnered with my husband first. Um, my uh, husband is uh, very involved in education and built a school in Las Vegas. It has a, a big foundation back there, and they got very involved and and uh, you know shared a similar commitment of giving back to community. And uh, as as uh, we kind of gotten to know. Um, all of each other. Um, they've been a big supporter as well as for my foundation. Uh, my foundation back in Germany, Children for Tomorrow, work with traumatized children, and they've been incredible about raising awareness and, and highlighting our work as, as well as um, sharing the same values.